Um, my name is Daniel Schneider. I uh, work for the Society for Industrial Archaeology and managing the headquarters in addition to doing industrial archaeology work of my own and some industrial history. I'm also a letterpress printer and book artist. Um, this uh, presentation is about the Calumet and Hecla milling complex at Lakeland in Michigan and the uh, project I've been working on to interpret it uh, to bring some visually interesting archival materials to the sites themselves. Um, in addition to uh, managing the Society for Industrial Archaeology headquarters, um, I do archaeology work and history um, related to industry, um, particularly the history of the printing industry and um, uh, the copper industry, um, copper ore processing, uh, the part of the country that uh, I live in. Um, Lake Linden, Michigan is, was a site of the Calum and Hecla mill complex. Um, the kind of uh, Hecla Copper Mining Company um, in Lake Linden, Michigan. Um, and so that's what I'll be speaking on today, uh, a piece from my uh, town that I live in here uh, in Michigan. So this is what the uh, Calum and Hecla mill complex looked like in 1906. You actually have two mills here. The one on the right associated with this smokestack is the Calumet mill and the one on the left associated with this uh, smokestack is the Hecla mill. The foreground is occupied with um, stamp sand tailings, uh, which were the, the well, tailings of, from the milling process, um, the, the ore that was very low in copper content that was discarded into Torch Lake um, as, as a waste product. We call it locally here, we call it stamp sand because the um, or was pulverized using giant steam stamps that um, broke it down to a, a very coarse sand consistency. Um, in 1906, there were 450 people approximately um, throughout most of the year employed at this facility. Um, and and there, there are a few different buildings in this complex. So Lake Linden, Michigan is located in upper Michigan in the Keweenaw Peninsula of Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Um, that is in the middle of the area that was historically known as the Lake Superior Copper District. So up around here, uh, I'm hoping you can see the, uh, the pointer that I have here. Um, I guess somebody uh, shoot me a chat message if you can't and I'll try to, to uh, make that situation uh, corrected. But in any case, uh, in the middle of the Keweenaw Peninsula of Michigan and was historically known as the Lake Copper District. Here we have a view inside the mill itself. Um, this shows the um, washing floor of the mill. Um, this is the part of the mill where the, the fine copper was separated from the pulverized ore. Um, you can see this uh, uh, management type right here um, or possibly a visiting capitalist um, hosted by the company. Um, inspecting a Wilfley table, a machine for separating very fine um, bits of copper from the, um, from the, the pulverized rock, um, mine rock but, and copper ore. And then here's a worker up here in the corner um, uh, tending one of the machines. And the, the point of this, this image is to show that this is a very crowded workspace, a lot of girders, a lot of machinery, a lot of um, uh, power transmittal uh, equipment. Um, you can see these drive belts here and such. Um, and uh, this is this cart right here is they call that a mineral cart. Uh, mineral was a term for the mill product, which was a, a concentrated um, copper product that would go from the um, mill to the smelter. Um, the smelter being located just a few miles uh, down the road in the town of Hubble on a CMH's smelter. Um, contrast this with the way the site looks now. Um, it's quite a bit more peaceful and serene. Um, this photo was taken in the summer of last year, 2019, when I believe that St. John's wort was in full bloom. Um, the part that you saw in the, the photo on the previous slide is um, this flat area around here, um, the washing floor, um, which is just level concrete at this point um, with, with some cracks and some plants growing in it. But at any rate, um, the, these uh, features here are the, the footings for um, door thickeners, which was an earlier technology um, for uh, sorting out the really fine particles of copper again from the most fine um, pulverized ore in the mill. Um, what uh, drew me to this site is it's in my hometown 
Um, and I also um, it was interested to try to demystify some of the remains. Um, the, there's very little left of, of any of the uh, structures in, in this complex and almost nothing left of machinery. And the, um, but in contrast to that, the documentary record is very rich. There's some very strong archival resources associated with it. And many of them are graphic in nature and they bring, um, they had the capacity to bring some immediate visual clarity um, to the, um, this, these resources, these sites that have been abstracted by processes of, of demolition and degradation over time. Um, for example, uh, these um, footings here are represented in this engineering drawing. You can see at the bottom of the, the shape there, um, the footing is, is rendered by the engineers. Um, this was in the collection of the Michigan Tech Archives and Copper Country Historical Collections um, and, and showing a multi-tiered uh, multi, um, um, tank here where, where in each of these uh, tiers, water was flowing um, very gently to separate those very fine um, articles of copper. Um, and so this creates a, a real um, um, uh, visual association with the, the history of and the use of those um, materials. Um, so it, here it is on the, the panel itself in the lower right hand corner. Um, and, and so there's, there's the, this project was, is really, like I said, it was a side project and it's, it's been for me an exciting opportunity to try to demystify some of the, um, these, these resources that are um, a little bit forgotten now in, in my um, hometown here, well, adopted hometown now of Lake Linden. Um, this is a, a different phase of the operations of the, the milling complex and a different aspect of it. What you're seeing in the foreground is the, is the um, stamp sand deposit that you saw in the original um, image that, that started the, the presentation. Um, but now it's been interrupted and, and cut up and dug up by the machine in the right hand side of the image, which is a, a, a reclamation dredge. Um, later in the operating years of, of many of the larger, longer lived companies um, in, the, uh, copper, in the copper country, that's the, the term that often gets used by the tourism bureau and such to describe the lake district. Um, so that's gonna slip into my vocabulary from time to time. But at any rate, particularly on Torch Lake, there were multiple companies operating these dredges to reclaim the tailings. Um, the tailings were created by processes that were, um, were not in, incredibly efficient and, and with earlier technologies from the, the mid to late 19th century. And so um, they, they left a fair bit of copper still in that uh, sand that was discarded as tailings. So the companies found it was very profitable, profitable to recover that and um, dredge it up. Um, it got pumped into this building and it got pumped further inshore um, into this building, which was Calumet and Hecla regrinding mill number two. Um, and these mills that you see are, are called ball mills. I believe these are Hardinge, but they might be Alice Chalmers. Um, forgive me for uh, not having been to the archive to check that up on that in a while. But the way they worked is that they spun at a, a pretty good rate of speed. They're full of hardened steel balls. And when that um, stamp sand passed through them, those balls would pulverize that sand down to a very fine consistency, something like flour. And that enabled them to use newer technologies um, such as flotation to, uh, to um, separate the really, really fine particles of copper out of that. Um, they, they were able to operate profitably on that basis using what had formerly been discarded as a, um, as a waste product. And I find that's a, a very interesting aspect of the uh, development of the copper processing um, and the history of it here in the, the Cubanoff Peninsula in the Lake District. This is what's left of that building. It's a, a foundation and a, a very uh, flat foundation at that with uh, some uh, pretty mystifying um, shapes throughout it. If you don't know the history of the building and, and very much about copper milling, um, the, these channels that are cut into the concrete um, don't make a lot of sense. Um, but the, this uh, engineer's drawing here, architect's drawing showing, the, uh, um, showing that foundation um, 
gives a, a visual context and an association with that history. And it, 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 uh, I'm, my hope is that once this sign is in place, it's gonna be, uh, create a connection and some clarity um, for people in town when the, the road that you saw um, that got paved across that, um, the uh, foundation here is, uh, uh, leads back to our, our uh, village marina um, at the head of Torch Lake. So we, we get a lot of people through there and I'm excited about the prospect to uh, demystify this resource for them. Um, I hope to have these signs in place by the middle of the summer. Um, they've been subject to a few delays in the past and certainly right now. Um, but I was able to include that um, image as the background for um, the interpretive sign here, um, which also gives a little bit of historical context and, and the, the type of thing you would expect to find on an interpretive sign. The figure number three there is the, the um, extant dredge um, that is, is uh, formerly owned by County Manhecla Mining Company and then by the Quincy Mining Company. Um, and it's still um, most of the way standing in Torch Lake, uh, about 10 miles, well, about six miles south of Lake Linden, um, where I'm sitting now um, and listening to the side and, and looking very evocatively decayed. Um, it's a popular thing for people to photograph, but pretty difficult to photograph. Um, and then um, another um, extant piece of machinery, this one not associated with the Calumet or the Hecla Mill, um, this is, was the steam stamp, um, and this is the last extant steam stamp that is in the Copper uh, District of Michigan here. Um, and this, the steam stamp, um, in this case, it's a Nordberg steam stamp. The way it worked was um, to, uh, the steam apparatus at the top would drive a shaft that had a shoe at the bottom of it, and the stamp shoe pounded on the, on the ore as it came into the um, mortar down at the bottom part here. Um, and that steam um, greatly augmented the uh, gravity power um, that previous earlier stamps had relied on and uh, was able to, to, to uh, pulverize the ore and crush it and to liberate the copper. Um, I, I bring this up just for a visual um, point of view because all we have to show for the um, steam stamps that were in place at the uh, Calumet and Hecla facilities at the head of Torch Lake um, is are a, a few drawings like this one um, from the Smithsonian Institution. This drawing has a Society for Industrial Archaeology connection in that um, Robert Vogel, um, one of the founding members of the society, came to the uh, came to the Lake District in the in the. Uh, came to the Lake District at the end of the 1960s and um, collected some of these, the, uh, draw, the drawings that Levitt had, had created. Uh, Erasmus D. Levitt was a consulting engineer for the Calumet and Hecla Mining Company and a, a nationally significant engineer. Um, and uh, so at, at the end of the 60s, Calumet and Hecla was kind of fading out of existence at that point. And um, the uh, industrial archaeology was was um, barely uh, being born here at that point. But Robert uh, Vogel came to get these drawings, and they uh, brought them to Washington um, to uh, because of the significance of Levitt. This became kind of the urban legend um, in the local um, historical community up here. I uh, knew a lot of people who had heard a similar story about these drawings, but had never been able to track down the drawings themselves. Um, but with some um, SIA connections and, um, and actually another uh, SIA member, David Hayes, who was researching Levitt, had, uh, I found, came across some notes um, in the archives that he had created. And uh, it led me to the National Museum of American History and the Archive Center, where they uh, found this image for me uh, some time ago and I was able to obtain a scan of it. And now um, I'm very excited to be able to present this image um, adjacent to the remains that it, it was associated with. Um, and that is uh, essentially my uh, talk and my presentation. Um, if you'll